Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. The biggest downside to using Octane for Blender, in my opinion, is viewport performance. If you have a fast GPU setup and a simple seam, it's not a big deal, but as your scene gets more complex, it can be slow and hard to work with. I'll start by demonstrating with a simple scene, then I'll show you a real example from an interior scene I bought on Blender Market from 3D Shaker. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to buy it. It's set up for Octane for Blender and Cycles, and it's great quality. Lastly, I just want to thank Edward O'Connell, who posted some of these hacks on the Facebook group a while back. Okay, I recorded this tutorial, and then I realized I really needed to build this into my add-on, so now in AP Octane, you have this viewport. At the very top, you have automatic viewport performance, and you can go to default, which will go back to the default settings, and max, which will go to the max settings, which basically turns on all of these buttons for you, so you don't have to do them one by one. Okay, here's an example of viewport performance at the default setting. So here you can see it's uh, rendering at 27 seconds, so it takes about 25 seconds here. Okay, and let's go ahead and enable max. Okay, this is with max on, and you can see even after we've rendered, we can zoom in and out and pan around, which is nice, but let's go ahead and move so we can see how long it takes. This is a very heavy scene, of course, so it takes about almost 10 seconds. So you can see the difference is, is quite, quite drastic. It's a lot faster, it's a lot more performant, and it's easier to navigate around your scene. There are a few things you have to do manually, and I've built them into the tips here, so if you click on max, it tells you enable denoise pass and adapt cam res manually. So what that means is, if I click on this, it will set all these settings. You need to go to view layer properties, and then under preview pass type, go to denoiser beauty. This shows the denoising image over here. And then the other thing it said was something about adapt to camera resolution. What that is, is with your active camera selected, go down to camera, and then come down here to adapt to camera view resolution. I can trigger this from Python, but it doesn't update the image here. So this is something you have to do manually for now. You may also have to check in your camera imager that denoise is on. So sometimes you'll find that it's waiting for image over here. And you can see if I move around, it doesn't do anything, it won't change. And that's because you have your denoise beauty pass on, but enabling denoising is off. Or maybe you don't have enough preview samples. So just check on that. Same thing, if you want to turn this off, you need to make sure that you go to your preview passes, go back to combined. If you want to turn off denoising and all that. Go to your camera. And then make sure you uncheck this by yourself. Otherwise it may not show up. Okay, now I will go through the full tutorial and I'll explain what each and every section does. Just keep in mind, I do have this built into the add-on now. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually go to Window and then Toggle System Console. If Blender freezes for whatever reason, you can come into this console and press Control C and it will stop whatever process is causing it to freeze. Sometimes you can also get clues of why your scene is freezing. Okay, this may be obvious, but the view, 3D viewport is rendering at the resolution of your screen. So if I'm in full screen and I have a 4K monitor, it has to render this scene in 4K. So if you see here, I'll just let this pause for a second. It's going to take five seconds for it to render on 4K on, on this particular screen. If I come out of full screen, instead of five seconds, it takes half a second. So, you know, depending on your setup and your scene, you know, this is one thing you could do is you could just have this tiny viewport and it'll render a lot faster just because it's having to at less resolution. You could also change your monitor to be, instead of showing 4K, you could change it to save 2K or 1K. Then you don't have to necessarily worry about being in full screen. Instead of being 4K, it'll just render 1K, so it'll render a lot faster. The next tip is if you go over here to render properties and you click on search and search for sub and then scroll to the bottom, you'll see sub sample mode. This is different than AI upsampler, which we will talk about in a little bit. So with this off, which is the default, no subsampling, if I move around my viewport, it's very choppy. You can see it skips around. If I enable this, and I'll just go to four by four for now, you can see as I move, it's fluid. Even though you, you see the sub pixels, you see the big pixels, if I go in close, you can see them even better, but it's, it's a lot smoother. So you could set that to two by two. For me, I always set it to four by four because it just makes the viewport smoother when you're working with it. Okay, I'm gonna turn off subsampling for now just so we can see the effects from the other ones. So the other one is AI upsampling, just again, not to be confused with subsampling. If you go to the Octane Camera Imager and you go down to AI Upsampler, by default it's turned off and there's no upsampling. 
So this is what it's like without upsampling. And then if you turn this on to two, you can see it's a little bit more responsive. And then if you go up to four, it's even more responsive. But you wanna be careful with this. At four by four, you can see it's not sharp at all. This is without, so you can see with no AI upsampling, it looks crisp. And with four by four, it's pretty bad. So I think basically what it's doing is it's cutting your resolution in half or in fourth and then using AI to upsample the image. So the result, so this example, for instance, the result in time is, is a big difference. You know, three minutes and 50 seconds versus 13 and 44. But I think you would need to be really careful with it and you would want to look at your own project if you were going to actually render with AI upsampling turned on. So if you just use it for the, pre, for the viewport, I think that's a smart idea, especially depending on your hardware and everything else. I basically never go to 4x4. Denoising is something else that's gonna help viewport performance. To turn that on, go over to Octane tab, Camera Imager, make sure this is checked and Override is checked. Go down to Enable Denoising. Your minimum denoise samples, you could set this to whatever you want. I like to set it to one just because I don't wanna accidentally forget to set it, and sometimes I do set my previews samples really low. So you'll have to find the number that works for you. I usually just start at 20, because 20 is usually enough that it looks okay, and not too much that it takes too long, so. Okay, this next tip is really important, especially as you, your scenes get really complex. I'm going to drag a window over, so I have two 3D viewports. I'm going to go into camera mode in both of these, and then if you need to make sure that camera to view is, is turned on for you. I actually use my own add-on where I can navigate with WASD, so I can navigate sort of like a game, so it's a little bit different for me, but you need to have that button checked. You're gonna use solid mode or even wireframe mode to move around, and you'll be able to use your other screen for, to do the actual rendering. And then here is the trick. So it, with the camera selected, I'm gonna go ahead and select my camera, you can go down to the op the camera options down here, search for adapt, and then you see this button, this is under the camera tab, adapt to camera view resolution. So if we turn this on, okay, if you notice that it changes your field of view, so for instance, when I turn this on, it changes the, the camera altogether, that's because this method does not work with render region on. So if you do control B to do a render region, right, and you do it for your camera especially, it's not going to work, so you have to do Control alt b to clear the render region. Now, it's still only going to render in the camera view, but you need to, that's something to be aware of. You can't use render region. So the other way to turn that off is under the Scene tab. You can turn off render region here. So now you have Adapt View to Camera Resolution on. So you can see now, actually, I can zoom in and zoom out, and it doesn't re-render. Do you see that? If we have it turned off, and I zoom in or zoom out, it changes. It has to re-render every time I do that. I have this turned on under our scene properties. This is the hack that I found. So let's say this is the end resolution that I want it to be. If I, if I just do 25%, it actually doesn't change it in the viewport. So we gotta keep this at 100. So you basically reverse it. So you say, okay, this is my end result. I want the viewport to be a quarter of the resolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type on here, divide by four, divide by four. And now this is going to render at a quarter of the resolution. And what we need to do here is put 400. So if we press render, it will render at 3840 by whatever, 2160 or whatever it was. But right now it's going to render, in here it's going to render a much smaller resolution. So it's going to make working in our viewport so much easier. And I'm going to show you an example here. So if we just move forward here. Let's just move here, and let's see, it takes um, 2.6 seconds to render that. And then if we go back here, so we'll do 960 times four times four, it's going to take a lot longer. So at full resolution, it took 48 seconds to render the same frame. So yeah, 50 seconds versus two seconds. You can also work by just moving the camera but now it doesn't matter how big this is, it's only ever going to render at that small image, so you can work in full screen, which I like to do. And if your scene is like this, you can actually, you don't even need the second viewport, and you can just sort of fly around your scene like you normally do, and you don't have to worry about it 
being a tiny screen, but it'll still render pretty fast. Okay, so now let's look at a real example. And also it's pretty complex. So you can see here there's over 100 images, there's over 100 materials, there's over 100 meshes. You can also see up here there are almost 10 million triangles. If you are on a slower GPU, you will definitely have to turn on out of core. So I can, if I'm flying through here now, you can see on the left my GPU is having a hard time keeping up. So earlier with the monkey, it was fine. I could just zoom around the scene through this through just the camera view but now i wouldn't know where i'm going until you know five or ten seconds has passed would i even know where i'm at so i can come over here and use this to sort of frame up my shot i can come over say i want to see what's in the bathroom and then i could pause on that and let it render a little bit uh, over here if i wanted to render faster i could continue to drop my resolution down over here I don't think I'm going to right now because I think you know this still gives you an idea. But this is basically the only way I would be able to navigate this scene. I should also turn on everything. I need to turn on 4x4 four four subsampling, 2x2 two two upsampling. Now you can see it moves even faster than before. So I can sort of see where I'm going now. Let me fly through here, come up here, see what this looks like up here. So the subsampling helps a lot. I might turn off the um, the AI upsampling because I think it just looks it just makes this, the the whole scene look terrible. <laughs> so of course I could also turn down my max preview samples depending on my denoise settings here. Uh, yeah, I have it set to one, so it'll denoise the scene and I can get a faster preview there. It only takes four seconds for me to get that. One of the coolest features of Octane is to have real-time color correction through the camera imager. When I'm in cycles and I don't have this. I find myself really missing it because it, it really helps to be able to just in real time sort of change the look of your shot. And all these settings they have here just work so well. I love the response types as well because you can get different film stock looks just based on actual film, which is, which is really neat. And then yeah, if you've set this up correctly, when you go to render, it'll render at full resolution because remember we put 400% here. So well, let's go ahead and test that now. All right, this is how the final render turned out. Okay, that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, any comments, if you have any other tips or tricks. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next